Hello and welcome everyone. This is Type V3 with a gunpla review of the 1 to 144th scale high grade transient Gundam, the bursting blue winged mobile suit who captains Team Celestial Sphere. Seven runners, a medium set of polycaps, a small foil sticker sheet, and a clear blue display stand make up the components of this kit. Interestingly, there isn't a single full-sized frame, so the actual amount of plastic included with the transient is less than that of an average HG. Also, despite boasting a similar appearance to an Exia Gundam, this kit is, in fact, entirely new, and carries almost no elements from previous 00 Gundam high grades. The build is simple and straightforward, and the predominant use of white plastic makes it easy to hide most nub marks. The trickiest bit is just trying not to lose the small, clear blue lenses. Otherwise, there's nothing else of note to add with regards to the build process. Even from a quick snap assembly, the HG Transient Gundam looks great and represents its animation counterpart very well. The stylized proportions are perfect and all the main design elements have found their way onto the body. Actually, there might be even more detail here than in the original line art. Silver stickers are used underneath the clear blue lenses to make them more reflective, although on the subject of the lenses, I think they could have been a shade lighter. Personally, I found the HG Transient looks great, as is, straight out of the box. However, if anime accuracy is your thing, you'll find a bit more work than expected with this kit. For starters, because the Gundam's mostly white, Bandai felt there was less of a need for part separation. While this makes the build easier, it does make painting and details all the more complicated. For example, the torso should have silver sections to it, but with it mostly being one big plastic piece, painting in the colored parts proved to be more trouble than it's worth. The kit also suffers from quite noticeable seam lines. Shoulders, forearms, and lower legs are all places worth covering up. On the bright side, panel lining is a breeze here, and for most, I think that's all the extra detail needed to satisfy. In terms of size, you're looking at a 5 inch tall model kit, though its sleek and minimal aesthetic can make it appear smaller than it is when compared to other high grades of similar price point. For articulation, the transient has a double ball jointed neck so you can go back and forth, up and down. Looking side to side is pretty good, and there's some good tilting action going on. The torso itself has two ball joints, one in the mid torso and one in the waist. You can get a nice waist swivel out of it. Uh, some decent ab crunch back and forth as well. The arms are connected on a poly cap with a ball joint, so there's some good uh, back and forth shoulder motion. Uh, this piece here in the middle is a, a separate add-on, and it can sometimes restrict some of the movement. As you can tell, the ball joint actually connects on the other side here, and then the arm uh, just slides into this peg. This does give you a full 360 uh, degree range of motion, although this piece here can get in the way, as can these wings back here. The shoulder themselves has a... A separate hinge that goes back and forth. The arm can come outwards. You do have a rotation at the bicep. Double jointed elbow with incredible range. Look at that. And then of course a ball jointed wrist just to finish it all off. The front hip skirts are on ball joints. They can go forward on their own. The side ones are on a hinge with a swivel. And for the back, there are no back hip skirts. So there's nothing there to impede movement. The hips themselves are on universal joints so they can go forward, they can come outward pretty good, and they are connected by single bars so they move together with one another. And for the back, of course, you can get it to go all the way back. There is no real bicep swivel. I mean, that is a swivel there, but because of the design, there's no real rotation you can get out of it. The knees are double jointed, and of course, they are excellent. The ankles themselves have an ankle guard that pivots back and forth. The ankles can, of course, pivot back and forth themselves. There's some good rocking motion to them. And the toes, both the toes and the heel, can come together just so they can get out of your way in uh, flight poses. The rear wing assembly is fairly basic. I mean, these uh, two sides here are connected on ball joints just to the center piece. And these blue pieces can hinge downwards. As for the bottom here, all you can do is flap it back and forth. Articulation on the transient is great. Shoulders could use more range of motion, still outside of the HG build burning Gundam, you'd be hard pressed to find a high grade kit that poses better. Accessories are very minimal with the transient. Besides the already attached fists, there's a single left open palm and these three hands together are solely used for display purposes. The only other pair of hands included are a special gripping type and they're used for the Gundam's main weapon, the GN Partisan. Essentially, it's a large, double-edged spear. The clear blue pieces are nice, though the white staff is a tad dull without any extra detail. The MS can wield the weapon easy enough without any weight issues. Special features include the main end opening to form a more trident-like weapon. 
Extra effect parts would have been nice here to simulate it firing a beam. Also, the entire staff can split to form two lance bits. Unfortunately, you will need to invest in separate display stands to properly demonstrate this. Oh yeah, and in case you were wondering, you do indeed get two of the GN Partisans. Finally, like mentioned earlier, there's also a basic display stand. It's identical to the one included with the HG Gundam Portant, only this one's blue. The HG Transient Gundam was the kit I was looking forward to most from the second half of Gundam Build Fighters Try. Clean aesthetics, simple weapons, and its foundations rooted in the Exia Gundam were what drew me to it. At the same time, those attractive qualities are more or less the best way to describe what this kit has to offer, and if none of those aspects appeal to you, there's not much else the Transient Gundam can do to seize your interest. The only other thing I'd highlight is the kit's superb articulation and solid construction, which makes it a joy to pose and play with. To put it another way, the Transient doesn't do a whole lot, yet it excels at its minimal offerings with little to no drawbacks. Thing is, there's other Gunpla kits with this exact quality that also offer a richer feature set or additional gimmicks. Because of this, the Transient doesn't make for the best value. You sort of get the sense that Bandai didn't put a huge effort into this kit as they were confident that the slick design would be enough to sell it. And to be fair, it worked on me. Ultimately, the 1 to 1 44th scale high grade Transient Gundam is functionally speaking up there with the best of the Build Fighter releases. However, as a complete package, it doesn't quite hit the top end status. But that's all for me. Thanks for watching, and that's two out of three for Team Celestial Sphere. Just one more to go before we reach the end.